All right, Advent of Code, day 13. Here we go. Okay, I'm just doing input parsing right now. Seems good. I'm comparing two values. Uh, first value is called left and second value is right. They're both lists. Which of the pairs is in the right order? Left side is smaller. Okay. So we're just right and right to compare. We're just going to return a less than b. Um, uh, we got. We need to care about equality. Um, sure. So we'll do like. Turn Okay, and then if we get to the end, um, n is less than m, minus one, less than m. Uh, exactly one value is an integer. Convert the integer to a list. Ah. Uh, Uh, how do I want to do this? I think I'll do it on my first orders. Um, yeah, actually, let's do this. That should be fine, I think. Uh, I can actually just get rid of this because if we get to this point, okay, so the comparison happens. We'd like to, what are the indices of the pairs that are already in the right order? Okay. First is index one. And what we'll do is, if comparing A to B is negative one, they're in the right order. Seems right. What is X? Um, that would be. Oops. Where did that happen? Wait, what? I'm confused. Where is my error? Oh, 
igual. Ahora no me lo tengo um. Oh, whoops. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know why I did here. Wait. What what did I do? What? Okay, let's. Sorry. Um. Yeah, this is what I wanted to do. Thirty-three. Okay, two additional divided packets. Organize all packets into the. Just need to put all the packets in the right order. Okay. Um, so now what we'll do is we will. I think it's just going to be. Good, and then we'll also append this and this, and then uh, I'll start with comparators. Not easy. Okay, we'll do we'll do this then. Um, we'll write a bubble sort. Um, If these are if this is straight to zero, then hopefully my, my bubble sort here is right. Uh, now it cares about uh, locate divider packets, the indices of the two divider packets. Okay. Um, we'll just do this here. Okay, and then just multiply them. One, rank 13. Oh, that was a pretty good day. Uh, I can't believe I actually rewrote a bubble sort. Um, that was for sure an experience. Oh, man. That was, how long did that take? Let's see. Um, that took like eight minutes, so that took a while. Oh, man. And then part one, what did I take for part one? I think I was going a little slow on part one, for sure. I took 549 compared to like sub five up here. Yeah, I could see that. I think I was definitely taking my time a little bit. Um, and also like, I made a lot of decisions about like structuring code and thinking, oh, this is cleaner, no, that's cleaner. And I kind of went back and forth when I probably should have just written something and ran, ran away with it. Um, for context, the reason why I actually care about like if my code is nice or not, I mean, some of it is just like nitpicky. Like I want to have code that does not have massive duplication. Part of it is genuinely when part two rolls around, if I need to modify this code and I've written really bad code, I'm kind of in a bad position. Um, so I think there is like some degree of you do want to write functional code or like modular-ish code. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some times though, like we're writing this compare function, I think it's pretty unlikely the compare function would change. Um, so I probably don't need to worry about too much about how that's structured. But I think these, these things are like kind of hard to decide um, while writing things. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll do some quick question explanation now. Um, so if you did not get a chance to read the question, um, we basically have these like, they call them packets on each line. Uh, we have two per like group, um, and 
Yeah, and basically we're trying to figure out like, are these in the right order or the wrong order? Um, and so there's an ordering defined on these, which is um, which is that uh, like these are like nested lists of lists and uh, ints, um, and basically when you're comparing two things, if they're both an int, the smaller int is like smaller. Uh, if they're both lists, then um, then you like go element by element in the list, um, and it's kind of like regular tuple comparison where the um, where like you compare the first element first, and you only ever look at the second element if the first element uh, is equal, right? So like, where's an example? Um, none of these are really great examples, are they? Uh, I guess here, if you were comparing these, you compare the first two elements, they match, then the next two elements, they match. And then once you see one that is larger, like you just immediately know that this packet is larger than this one, and you don't need to even look at what comes after, um, is what you do. So like this is sort of the standard ordering for lists and tuples. Um, and then the final thing is that if one value is an integer and one of them is not, um, then you need to coerce the integer to a list by making it a single element list. Um, and I guess I forgot to say, if the lists are not equal lengths, then the, I believe it says the shorted list is uh, considered like the smaller element. Uh, so in this case, I think the sevens should be smaller. Like the second one here is smaller than the first one. Anyways, so they give us these comparison rules. And I guess the temptation here is you're sort of tempted to use like the natural ordering that Python already has. But I think it'd be pretty hard actually to make a deal with this constraint where you need to convert an integer to a list if um, if it's not a list. Yeah, I don't... I guess it wouldn't be too hard to hack in I think it would take longer. Um, yeah, I think it would take longer. Um, what I would probably do if I wanted to do it this way is I would like is I would change these int objects into like um, some kind of non-int object uh, where I could put my own custom comparison method. And if it ever gets compared against a list, well, the list is a built-in type though. So I, I think that would be really annoying to do because um, you can't override the list comparison method. Um, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be that bad, but certainly I think my judgment while I was doing this is that that could be really bad and like not easy. Um, but it's like a little bit tempting. Uh, yeah, so you just write the rules and then part one asks, um, which, uh, like find which of these pairs are in the correct order and which of them are not and add up the indices of the ones that are not in the correct order. So you kind of just do that. Um, I wrote like a comparison function and then I just went through and checked. Um, and then that's, I think, just implement the rules pretty much. Um, I did do the comparison recursively. I think that's probably like the only sensible way to do it. Um, yeah. Um, there's like maybe s some, con no, I guess there's not. Uh, I was a little worried if you'd be doing like copying. I don't think there's any copying that happens here um, because these are all like passed by reference unless they're ints, in which case you're not really worried anyways about copying things. So I think this comparison is like perfectly fine. And uh, obviously the code quality here leaves something to be desired, but um, I think this is like the way that you would write a compare function. Um, cool, and then for part two they say, now take all the packets and just sort them. Just sort all the packets. Um, and they don't really say this, but the uh, the comparison function that was defined up here is like a total ordering. Um, so, like, it is true that uh, every element can, can be compared with every other element, and like it obeys the transitive properties and everything you need to actually like sort it. Um, so it's perfectly fine. Like, it is a well-defined operation to sort all these things. Uh, now that you have this comparison function, they also say throw in these two divider packets. Um, and now they're interested in basically like where do the divider packets end up when you sort it. Um, and yeah, I think in a language that is not Python, um, like, now I still think Python is a good choice, but in Java, for instance, this could be easier if you'd already written a compare function because you can give it a, you can give the standard library sort functions a compare function that just outputs like minus one, zero, or one. Um, and it will just like sort it according to that. Um, in Python, 
I think you used to be able to do that in like Python version two, uh, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, but now in Python three, uh, if you want to sort with some custom evaluation, um, the like list dot sort it takes in a key function instead. Um, and what the key function is is it like applies the key function to each element and then sorts it on that. Um, so you sort of can't really uh, give it like an arbitrary compare function. The closest you can do is like, I, I've seen the hacky code that does this, but you can create a key function that turns everything into a custom object where you've overridden the less than operator with your compare to. Um, so like you can do it, but I think here I knew that that would take way too long for me to figure, I mean, I guess I could just look it up, um, but I still figured it'd be, take a little while for me to actually find that. So I just rewrote a sort from hand. Uh, this is like one of the simplest sorts. This is a bubble sort. Um, yeah, it just it just sorts. Uh, it's n squared, but that doesn't really matter because um, like n is small here. Um, I don't know exactly how small, but I assume it's like very small. Um, yeah, 300. So you can see it like takes a very short period of time when it does this. Um, but yeah, and I guess what we'll do, I'll just complete the code here. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what the problem is and how I did it. Um, so that's like the whole explanation. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think today was too hard or terribly uh, interesting. Um, really, really an implementation question, but I think it tests a little bit like how well you know your built-in sorting library um, to make sure that you can actually uh, do the same thing here. Um, or do the same thing as in like easily get your sorting function to obey some arbitrary comparison function. Cool. But uh, that's it for day 13. Pretty happy with my uh, 33 and 13. Let's see what happens with my global. I'm up to 10 on the global. Okay. So I'm back in top 10. That's pretty cool. Um, hopefully I can uh, stay there or, or get higher. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all I have for today.